Logan Franklin was one of the many classic physique competitors that were going to compete at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. However, he unfortunately had a health scare last minute during his peak week and dropped out hours before the Olympia. It's a lot of work, so it was not easy making a decision to get this far and have to stop. But that, no matter what it is, everything in life happens for a reason. And, uh, and I will be back. So don't worry guys, I'm gonna make sure that I'm healthy. And uh, you know, I made the decision to not continue pressing because you know, I was getting really sick yesterday and my body was starting to get a little bit unresponsive. We really didn't have too many big names drop out across any divisions. However, this one definitely disappointed a lot of fans. Now we are left questioning what would have happened, where would he have placed if Logan Franklin did the 2022 Mr. Olympia? So today, I'm going to do a comparison with a couple guys in the Olympia lineup, and we're going to see where Logan Franklin stacks up. All right, before I get into this, I do want to say a couple things. Um, the hardest decision about this comparison was not really deciding if he beat certain guys or not, but rather where to place him at all, right? You know, and that's what I took the most liberty with. Would he be top six? Would he be top 10? Would he be, you know, not even placing it? I don't think that's true, but, you know, I had to really decide who to compare him against. And really, I think a lot of the middle of the pack, the 13 through top 10 guys, were fairly similar in terms of quality, whether it be conditioning and size. So we are going to compare him against Gabriel Zancinelli, who placed 13th, Michael DeBull who placed 9th, excuse me, 10th, and then Alex Cambronero, who did place 9th. So we have 10 and 9 to see if he can crack that top 10 and maybe beat them in a couple poses. And then we have a very similar physique um, in the 13th place, Gabriel. So we're going to compare Logan Franklin's 2021 Arnold Classic physique against these three guys. Another thing is that Logan was going to be drastically improved. You know, he did a show... Um, very early on in the 2022 season that qualified him ahead of time for the 2022 Olympia. So he had a bunch of time to grow. And he did, you know, he's working with Milo Sarchev, who, like Samson, was able to put a lot of size on very quickly. And that size stuck. And, you know, if you saw some of the updates from Logan Franklin, you know that he was definitely looking massively improved. So really, this is just comparing his 2021 Arnold physique. Um, but it's going to be better than just comparing his Instagram updates, I feel, because um, this is going to be more in line conditioning-wise with these other guys. But I do think that we are comparing a a subpar physique to what he was going to bring. I do think this is going to be his best package yet, and I think um, it was going to be substantially better, honestly. But we're going to have to make do with the 2021 Arnold Classic. Uh, so take this entire comparison with a grain of salt, right? The entire video is a what-if scenario. And I'm just going to do the classic poses. I know some guys do every single mandatory for these classic guys. However, that doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to do the classic poses. So it's going to be a bit of a shorter video today since Classic Physique only has five mandatory poses. So let's get into the first pose, the front double biceps. Initially in the front double, um, I think the sizing may be a bit off for Alex. Maybe he needs to be a bit shorter. Um, but honestly, I really like Logan and Gabriel. These taller guys just have such a good, um, ad such a big advantage when they really do fill out their frames. And Logan has arguably the best arms, uh, at least the best peak biceps besides Gabriel. And honestly, I think it's going to be pretty even. Um, in terms of dryness, Gabriel's probably a bit drier. But again, we don't know what his package would have been in 2022, uh, what Logan's package would have been. However, I think he's probably in first place here. I'm not entirely sure. Michael DeBull also catches my eye because his, you know, supreme conditioning and his dryness, but he also has such that thin skin. It makes him look full, even though he's probably not that full because he comes in just so shredded. I don't know how he has time to fill up, but he does look full. So, I mean, really, whatever he's doing, it's clearly working. Um, all these guys really cut a good outline. I don't know if I could put Alex too high. I just think the legs leave a little, uh, leave a little to be desired. Um... Honestly, I'd probably have Logan in second or maybe third, a close there with Michael. 
Um, I'd probably have Gabriel in first just because his vacuum's a little better and he's cutting a very similar outline, if not a little bit better outline than Logan. For the side chest, this one is a bit interesting for Logan. He hits it in the old school fashion, right? But a lot of these guys do where they are propping up the pecs and they stand up a little taller. Um, you know, it's more classic-esque and a lot of these guys tend to do that instead of, instead of the open. And uh, I don't know if that's subconsciously that they do it or they do it on purpose to be more classic. Now, the problem is Logan does not have the detail that the other guys do, at least in the chest. Um, and he kind of has the same problem Arnold did where he has weaker delts a bigger chest and bigger arms, right? He's, uh, you know, Arnold, back in the day, most of those guys didn't really develop the delts a whole lot. Um, so by modern classic standards, he's kind of losing in the arm department, especially compared to someone like the bull who has capped delts, uh, Alex who has very capped delts, and even Gabriel, although their delts, his delts are a bit smaller, they're still, they still have that nice cap. Um, in terms of the lower body, I think... You have to give it to Michael in terms of the conditioning and the separation. Like he does have like a pretty big hamstring drop. I think Logan's is a lot bigger. Like you can have you can see this big sail coming down on the back of his leg. He has the biggest hamstrings and he has very good separation. You can see a couple lines in the glutes, but for the supreme definition, then obviously it's going to be Michael DeBull. Just about in every single pose, Michael DeBull is probably the most shredded athlete of our time, to be honest, right now. Um, and that is unfortunate because he has more detail in his chest. Michael has more detail in his chest. Gabriel has more detail in his chest. And Alex has more detail in his chest. Honestly, I'd have Logan either, yeah, probably just last. I mean, Alex glute, glute ham tie-in isn't there as much as Logan. So I could see a very small argument that Alex would be last, but honestly, it's the side chest pose, and Logan Franklin arguably has the weakest chest here, at, and definitely in terms of detail. I think um, it was looking a lot better uh, during his prep, but here, it's la he's lacking a little bit of that upper chest fullness that every single other guy has. You know, every single guy has a developed pec top to bottom. Logan's is slightly, slightly a bit more shallow at the top compared to the rest of the guys. And again, the detail is just not there compared to the rest of the guys. Um, the only thing I have him um, beating some of these guys on is the lower body. So I don't think I can place him in first. He may even be last here. And I'm also just not going to score these a whole lot. I, I'll do a preliminary scoring at the end to see uh, where they would have placed if I would have scored them. But I can tell you right now, I don't think Logan's in first for me at all. Back double biceps. Here's where I think Logan can make up a bit of ground. I'm really partial to Logan's back double biceps. I really like it. It does kind of remind you of Arnold. I really like how big his traps are and how that is a big part of the back. I know it may not be, uh, it may be cheating a little bit because, you know, the traps um, or like overpowering perhaps a lot of the other muscles and you know that's not really the complete development that you should have but I, I personally really like the look when we take a look at the lower body I want to start there first Logan Franklin is perhaps ha I think no I'll go ahead and give him the lower body just because of the sheer amount of quad sweep he has from the outside it's amazing and his glutes they're in they have lines hamstrings are the best on stage maybe Gabriel's but I prefer the cleaner lines of Logan's um Alex's glutes aren't don't have that deep of lines compared to Logan's, as you can see here. Um, and even Michael DeBull, the conditioning king, maybe isn't flexing them that hard because I feel like he would have the best glutes and hams here. And he has good, uh, Michael has good quad sweep here as well. But I just think all in all, I prefer the nice flow and how it just all puts together very nicely. It's very neat. The hamstrings are very nice that Logan brings to this post. So I think in lower body, I may have Logan winning this. Um, and it's very hard to be objective, especially in classic. I do think, in my opinion, I have Logan firmly winning in the lower body. Now, when we take a walk upstairs, Logan, I've noticed, is the most symmetrical guy by far. Take a look at Alex. Um, if you guys don't know, Alex does the weird head tilt thing because he got in a car accident and he cannot... I, from what I've read, he cannot see unless he tilts his head a certain way. And I didn't notice any imbalances before, but I knew that he was going to start having them because, you know, when you're constantly tilting your head 
all the time. That runs throughout your entire body. And not to mention, the human body is often very not, uh, very not, you know, not symmetrical usually at all. And having a slight imbalance in this, uh, where you can't really get around it at all, because you know, uh, seeing is pretty important. It's going to start translate into muscle imbalances. And sure enough, we have this huge one right here in the back. And in my opinion. If he didn't have this, he'd probably be winning, but it's just very, very distracting to me. Like this one lat, this one upper back portion is just jutting out way, way more than the other one. That may not even be a result of him tilting his neck. That just may come down to like his genetics and how he's always been. Um, but I feel like I've never noticed this before. And Alex is one of my uh, favorite classic guys, but this is just really, really distracting. And that's, like I said, unfortunate because I think he has the most complete back on this stage from lower back um, to upper back. He's the thickest and he's the most vascular through this region. Um... I just don't know. We'll, we'll come back to him. Um, Gabriel uh, kind of has a similar thing going on, but that's because of his tilt, right? Um, he's tilting that right leg back, giving him a, a slight imbalance. Uh, not really an imbalance, but it looks like an imbalance because he's tilting back so much on that far, on that right leg. So he has this kind of shifting in his lower back where it makes like one lat look like it's a bit more shallow and one lat looks like it's... Um, attaching a bit lower and that could be true but the tilt that he's rocking definitely doesn't help that muscle imbalance you're supposed to be hiding um, weaknesses not making them worse with your posing so but all in all gabriel's back is probably just middle of the pack here it's not a bad back um but in this lineup it's probably th the weakest um and you know, you know i that's that is maybe because i'm partial to logan franklin but i also don't like the uh, the lack of symmetry he has, whether it's down to posing or a, a um, uh, you know, a structural issue, I, I'm just not a huge fan. We're gonna skip over Logan because I already kind of talked about him, and then Michael DeBull. My favorite thing about his back is the Christmas tree. Um, I, I, he can, you know, he well, he tilts his thumbs back. He just has it regardless. And I, I gotta commemorate a lot of these guys. Logan Franklin actually is the only one that's not rocking a lower back Christmas tree hitting the back double biceps. He has one when he, you know, pulls back. Um, but Gabriel um, and even Alex has a, a, one starting here, right? It's not as deep as Gabriel and uh, uh, Michael's, but you know, it's, it's something. And then Michael, you know, he has, I said Gabriel, uh, Alex may have had the most complete back, but because of that asymmetry, uh, Michael DeBull is probably the most complete back and uh, without having an asymmetry, right? And I really like, again, his Christmas tree, fullness through the lats, good traps, good delts, and good arms, right? Um, I think he needs to close up his arms, uh, especially his left one, just a little bit because this right one looks good, but this left one doesn't look that good. And I really like the separation that he has in the triceps. I like that better than anyone's. Um, and for what it's worth in the arms, I think Gabriel's probably winning here because he has a similar amount of definition through the triceps and a bit more peak, uh, maybe not, maybe not a bit more, but uh, a similar amount of peak in his biceps. Logan. Now, now looking at Logan, I think he has the best delts and arms in this. Um, maybe not the, I would even say the best peaks. And you can tell this picture is a little blurrier compared to the Olympia ones, but you can tell he still has that amazing definition, not only through the delts, but you can see every head of the tricep is separated, um, and then the biceps peeking out, and those from rear delts to front delts, um, the delts all in all look very good, and the traps, of course, big, full, taking up most of the space on his back, and the only problem I have with his back is the softer lower back. Um, I think this not isn't even a conditioning issue. This is more just a training issue. He just you know needs to build a little bit more density in that back. But I think I'd give him not last place in this. I think I'd probably give that to Gabriel, then Alex. Uh, maybe I'd put Michael in first and Logan in second. But I'm trying not to be biased, but maybe I'd put Logan in first. I really think this is a very good pose for him. Uh, so screw it. I'll put Logan in first. Um, I mean... If I were a judge, it's up to me to give my opinion. You know, judges are just at the end of the day giving their opinion. So my opinion is Logan is winning this pose. I like him the best.
abs and thighs. Now you may notice I have two Logans on here because I wanted to compare his vacuum because some people were hitting a vacuum. Uh, Gabriel was hitting a vacuum and I couldn't find an abs and thighs that looked that good for him. And he honestly, I can see why because I think I did find a couple of low quality pictures, but he has like this kind of like four pack, half six pack going on, you know, where the the last two are kind of kind of there, but I don't think his abs are that good, and I don't think his quad sweep is that good either. I think his legs are all overall pretty good, but I just don't think his sweep is as good as someone like Logan Franklin or really even Alex in this particular pose, or especially Michael uh, Michael's quad sweep. Michael has perhaps the best quads right now, um, especially in terms of the sweep. But the abs are the least separated. Um, and the obliques also are spilling over a bit. And I know like that's not fat and that's that's not really something he can do too much about. That's just, you know, at the end of the day, that is just a, a, a muscle for the most part. I think that I can't give him this pose because of the abs, um, but he does have the best quads. Now, Alex has perhaps, no, he definitely does have the best abs right here. I like the obliques. I like how he's doing the slight twist. You know, he's not doing um, a vacuum, but he's not doing a head on abs and thighs, which he'd be still be good at. Even with his, um, slightly subpar quads, he'd still be good at this. But I think this is a very good pose for him, right? He show he's kind of like when Arnold did this in pumping iron. Um, you could see the obliques, the deeply cut abs, like I said, the most separated abs here. And arguably his quads are looking very, very good. Perhaps even, um, right up there with Michael DeBull. Now, when we get to Logan, very good vacuum, um, and his lats flare out, right? Even cutting a bigger contrast with his waist. Um, very good vacuum, not as good as sea bums, not as good as like a Frank Zane, but very good vacuum. And the quad sweep is all right. Um, I think he needs to flex this, uh, what is that? The right, uh, the left quad a bit differently, at least flex it the same way he's doing the right. So that way it doesn't look like there's so much disparity. And I'd like to see this one, the left one, just as full as the right one. And then for his regular ab shot where he's crunching down, I'd give it, I'd put him in second place, honestly, um, minimum third, uh, just because the abs are better and he's not giving up so much in terms of the legs. Although I do think his legs are third here. Um, but again, these these pictures are blurry. The lighting isn't that good. Um, but I think Alex does a very good job at presenting his legs to make them look honestly very good. I'd put Alex in first, um, Michael in second, and I'm going to put Logan in third, and then Gabriel in fourth. Now we have the favorite classic pose. And really, this is just... I can understand why they do this, but it's just very hard to judge. Because not only is this the most objective division by far, absolutely. You know, it's hard to, for even me, you know, to judge this right now. Do I be try to be more objective? But really, what is more objective, especially in classic? Um, so not only that, it's the most objective category already, but they're not even hitting the same poses. So really, I can just say, even though a guy may straight up not look as good, um, because he's hitting a pose so well, I can give it to him, you know, over someone that has a more complete physique, just because I don't like their pose. So we'll just run through these, kind of give my thoughts on them. Alex, uh, I think his back is super wide and these lats from the front look absolutely amazing. Deeply separated abs. I think this is an all right pose. Um, it's okay. Not something, it's not that it looks bad. I just think um, it's not a pose. I, it doesn't look bad. Let me say that. It does not look bad. However, I just think there are more traditional options, but Props for him to thinking outside the box. Definitely not a bad pose whatsoever. Arguably, in terms of execution, he's, you know, he's just as good as anybody else, if not better. Um, Logan, I'm always partial to the back, uh, to the twisting back double biceps, um, and he does it very, very well. I mean, not as good as Chris, but he has the separation and the peakiness of the biceps and the arms and the shoulders. Um, he has that cobra back coming down, and his back looks pretty thick. You know, his erectors leading into his waist. Glutes, lines, um, glute ham tie-in is there, clearly separated. The hamstring drop is there. He has very good hamstrings, as we saw before in the side chest. And the calves are separated. Sweep from the quads from the side looks pretty good. All in all, this is a very good pose. I think I'd put him up there above Romandino in terms of this pose, but not 
but I'd still play some second to Chris Bumstead in terms of the entire division of people I've seen hit this. Gabriel chooses the um, very safe, very traditional side tricep, and this is an all right pose for him. You know, the tricep is feathered. He knows he has very good triceps, and he has that sunken waist. However, I'd like to see him hit the pose a bit differently to bring out more of the chest thickness because, you know, he beat Logan in that. And we know it's there, but he's just caving in his chest a little bit. I'd like to see him pull back and maybe squeeze his other shoulder over just so we can get some more pop from this pack. Because you can see, even though he's hunched over, he's not losing any mass. Like, you can see that the mass is still there, but I think he can do a better job presenting it. Um, and the glutes, uh, he has the softest glutes. I guess you can't really see Alex's in this pose. But the softest glutes, especially compared to Logan, when they're kind of hitting side leg shots. Um, uh, 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 Gabriel's glutes don't have the sharp tie-in and the nice separation in the tie-in that logan does um but he does have more lines in the quads doesn't have as many lines as logan that's because logan is not hitting it um with his leg pressed up against his body so he's not like forcing it into the ground as much as gabriel is maybe he'd have a similar amount of lines i'd have to go back and check the side chest but i think uh, gabriel has a bit more lines in the actual quad and from here, you can see a bit more hamstring detail. But again, I think that is because Gabriel has his leg smashed into the other one, like a traditional side chest, side tricep pose, where Logan's is just kind of right there. Not that Logan's looks bad for the pose, um, it, and he can't really bring out any more detail given the physics of it. Um, but Gabriel's side leg looks a little bit better for what it's worth, but I don't know how much stock I could put into that. And then Michael DeBull. He's hitting a very similar shot to Logan. He's choosing to flex his tricep, though. The problem is, I don't think his tricep is as good as Gabriel's. I'll just say that. Gabriel's has a bit more feathering in it, and I like that. In terms of overall mass, uh, Michael's may be a bit bigger, but I like, I'm like. i just so partial to feathering when I see that. Like, Jay Cutler's quad stomp in 09. I just really like seeing that. Um, but I don't think his back is as suited for this pose at a twisting pose as Logan's is. You know, like I said, Logan's thick erectors and his lats, his cover back leads into a nice like V into his tiny waist uh, where Michael doesn't have that lat flare leading down into his waist as much as Logan does. Um, more lines in the glutes and it looks like he's doing a better job at flexing his hamstring and he still has a tight glute ham tie-in and like I said, dry leg and more hamstring pop. Uh, I think he's doing a better job at flexing his hamstring, um, but I, I I just don't think he should do this or at least try to do it a bit better where he tilt, twil, uh, tilts his torso a bit just so he can have that kind of flair that Logan does because right now it just kind of makes him look thick in the waist. Not that he has, not that it looks like super thick, but Logan's like making his waist disappear. It looks like a V tilt to the side and Michael just doesn't have that. So... I, I, like I said, I'm partial to a twisting back double biceps executed properly. I'm going to have to give this one to Logan, then Gabriel, maybe Alex, and then maybe Michael and last. But again, this is just so hard to judge. Really, I, I don't know how to objectively judge this. So I'm just going to be subjective. And I think Logan wins the best classic pose. So I've quickly just ran through those poses again and then scored them off camera. And it was very close. They were all within one point of each other. But I had Logan in first with 11. I remember the lowest score wins. Logan in first with 11. Uh, Michael DeBull in second with 12. Uh, Gabriel with 13. And then Alex with 14. However, you have to take this entire comparison with a huge grain of salt. Do I think that Logan Franklin with his 2021 Arnold Classic physique would place ahead of Alex and Michael DeBull? No. In fact, Alex beat him at the Arnold Classic 2021. So it's, and Alex was improved at this show. So it's very hard to make that argument at all. However, classic physique is just so objective. This is just how I saw it. But I would firmly, firmly say that Logan Franklin would have a very hard time getting into the top 10. In some poses, he barely beat Gabriel. And really, I think Gabriel may have been better at him versus his 2021 Arnold Classic physique. I know that may be a hot take, and I know Logan has a lot of fans. However, this, you know, this is nothing to take away. This is not to take away from Logan, because this is his 2021 physique, and he knows that he would have done better and brought a much better physique, much better package um, than the 2021 Arnold Classic. In fact, I'll go ahead and say it. I don't think Logan Franklin with his 2021 Arnold Classic physique would have placed top 10. 
And that's coming from someone who just scored him beating all of these guys. You know, you have to account that there are other things that go into this overall flow. Um, the pose routine may be scored. I don't even know if it was scored at this year's Mr. Olympia, but sometimes that's taken into account. And I just don't think he had the conditioning and the detail, and he was missing a few things, um, you know, that some pop to some muscles. And I think he needed to, one, add a little bit of size, two, get some more detail, and maybe come in more condition. But that's really it. And I do believe that he would have done that in 2022. I think he can really, based on his Instagram photos alone, make a very good case for himself that he is easily in the top 10. Of course, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Let me know how you saw it. Let me know who won the poses in your eyes. And I'd like to just start a discussion here. I'd like to know what you think and where you think Logan Franklin would have placed maybe with his 2021 physique at the Arnold Classic and maybe you, uh, make a prediction as to where he might have placed with his new and improved physique. If he did end up placing top 10, that would have been a major accomplishment because I think he's been top 10 before. I think he may have been top eight, top six. I'll have to go back and check. But a top 10 in this lineup is absolutely crazy. You have to be complete. You have to be shredded. You have to have enough mass for your frame. And I think he could have done most of those things on top of an amazing posing routine. I don't think there's any reason if he brought an improved package that he couldn't place at least fight tooth and nail pretty hard with these guys to place top 10. That's going to do it for this video, though. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, leave your comments down below. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you think Logan Franklin wouldn't even place at all. Maybe you're a Logan hater. Whatever it is, leave it down in the comments below. I love to hear what you have to say. If you do subscribe, turn on notifications. You're not going to want to miss another video, especially if I drop another what if video, because I do plan on doing what if Phil Heath competed at the 2022 Mr. Olympia, and what if Sean Roden did as well. I want to do a couple more comparisons. If you have any requests, leave them down below. So I'm going to do a couple more Olympia videos. I'm going to continue pumping out the vlogs, workout videos, whatnot. So you're going to want to subscribe, like every video, and thank you guys for watching.